Shabbat shalom, everybody. Uh, this is, <laughs> see, working with teenagers and my voice is cracking. I'm going through puberty all over again. Um, so Shabbat shalom. Let's see if we can get the voice going today right now. Shabbat shalom and uh, welcome to this week's 10-Minute Torah. This is Rabbi Stephen, uh, Rabbi Shmuel ben Hoshua. Um, still an adult, so I think, but <laughs> we'll see. So um, kudos again for Jack Mangan for John Paul Cohn and for Alana Midla, Mita for uh, accompanying me on the instruments. Alana brought her mandolin again. It was beautiful. Uh, John Paul on his baglama and uh, Jack, of course, on the guitar. And next Friday, this Friday, Shabbat, I will not be conducting services. I have a previous engagement, but they will be led by John Paul Cohen. And Jack will be there helping him out and Alana will be there with the music. Um, I'm putting myself out of business. You know, it's so great, you know, and you know, this is how you know our synagogue is succeeding and it's growing. When we have teenagers that are taking over, you know, door la door, you know, we're supposed to uh, impart Torah from one, from one generation to the next. And in fact, they say that uh, when you as an adult teach Torah to children and teenagers, then in a sense, you're like their parent. So. Isn't it great to have these teenagers that are taking such an active part, these post-bar mitzvah kids that are taking part in our service? And it's not just them. A few years ago, my first uh, high holidays as a rabbi, um, I went out, I had to go, uh, I conducted a wedding and, and Aaron Kaplan did a great job doing the Takiyah Gadola, you know, releasing us from Yom Kippur from the fast. Uh, I've had Nathan Gold up there with me as a gabbai. Uh, David Wallace has uh, uh, expressed interest and we've had him up there being a gabbai on Saturday mornings. So, you know, this speaks to our success. It really does. It really does. So uh, please come Friday. I will be back on Saturday and Saturday we will have a special Shavuot kind of uh, service. It'll be a little bit of an abbreviated service uh, because one will have a long discussion about different things in, in the Torah or different things in life. Bring your topics, come and let's see how it relates to Torah. And of course, Saturday night, we've got the community uh, Shavuot at the Kun Alam over at uh, Beshalom. And then Sunday morning, of course, we have our big meeting, our big general meeting of the year. We do elections and we've got a new board coming in, some of the people that are going to be involved. It's pretty exciting. So please be there. So without ado, let's talk about our new book that we're starting, which is Numbers, Bamidbar. Bamidbar means in the wilderness. And the English name of Bamidbar is Numbers. Okay, so why is it Numbers? Because it starts out with Hashem, God, telling Moses and Aaron to take a census of all the adult men between the ages of 20 and 60. These are the people that are adults, they're men, they're the ones that work, they're the ones that will ostensibly go out and fight any battles. And uh, also because Hashem wants to know, he wants to get to know us. And that's why they said, bring the heads of the, of the princes of each of the tribes up and have them do a count. And you count each individual, in per, each adult male personally, get their name, see who they are, and that way, Moses and Aaron were familiar with every single one of those adults. Now, what does that mean about the women and the children and the younger and, and you know, the older people? Well, do they get to know them? Sure. But the reason that these people are the focus of this particular census is because, again, if we're going to go in and we're going to take the land, we have to know what our strength, what our strength is, what our numbers are, right? And we have to know, we have to kind of get and think about it, kind of a little tacit acceptance from them that they're going to go out and do what they have to do. Now, interestingly enough, there are different times during the Torah when Hashem takes a census, when he says, do a head count. And it's not really a head count. We'll get to that in a minute. But one of the reasons they do is because, again, they want to see who's available to go and fight for the people just in case. The other thing is they want to keep track of how many Israelites are there when we had some of our 
tragedies in the wilderness, when we had the diseases, when people strayed with the golden calf and, you know, they were killed, when people, and we're going to see this coming up in the book of Mabibar or Numbers, is when we see a few of the rebellions, you know. So things happen and we want to keep track of everybody. And that's an indication, the sages say that's an indication of how much Hashem loves us because he wants to keep track. He wants to make sure. So, and interestingly enough, in last week's portion, uh, Bahu Kotai, it talked about the warning, right? Now keep that in mind, because remember, there's a flow to the Torah. And it said, if you do what you're supposed to do, then five will chase 20, 20 will chase a thousand. If you don't know, if you don't do what you're gonna do, tables are turned. Five will chase 20 of you, 20 of them will chase a thousand of you you'll be helpless, see? So think about how that relates to the idea of knowing what your strength is of your army, okay? So let's talk about this idea of the head count, okay? In Judaism, we're technically, actually we're kind of forbidden, we're not supposed to, take a head count. Now, what happens Saturday morning, Friday night, when you know people come into the synagogue and we're gonna have a service and we wanna know what the, what the minion is, what do we do? Well, let's see how many we have, you know, one, two, three. Not supposed to do that. Not supposed to do that. Somebody introduced me to a technique. There's a sentence, and I forget what she said it was. Joyce, if you're listening, do me a favor and respond and tell me what that sentence is. But as you point to each person, you recite that sentence. And if you get to the end of that sentence and there's more people left, then you know there's more than 10. So how do they do a count? How do we find, figure out who is available? How many people there are? Well, again, Everybody comes up, and what do they do? They drop a half shekel in the box, in the in the in, the, in whatever bowl or box that they're using, right? And at the end of the day, you count your half shekels, and that's how you know how many people they are. Now, for this, for the uh, the Israelites, you know, they had them come up, and each prince was kind of responsible. Him, and I guess he had some helpers. I mean, you know, gosh, you know, the, the tribe of Judah had like you know seven hundred thousand people or seventy thousand people. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, whereas uh, some of the other tribes, like Ruvain, only had about you know, 54,000. Uh, come to this week's Saturday morning service, <laughs> and we'll get into that. And it's it's a it's actually a very long portion, and it's a long portion because it goes to length, saying you know Moses and Aaron had you know the uh, uh, just to throw out somebody, Doxen uh, but Amidad. Uh, prince of the tribe of Judah come and he did his count and there was about 72, 73,000, whatever it was, people in his, uh, Ben in his tribe, 20 to 60, et cetera, as you count the shekels and he probably had his deputies there too, you know, helping him do the count because that would exhaust anybody. <clears throat> and as each tribe did this, then, um, you know, they added it up and they found that they had about 600,000, 603 or something uh, adult males. And in this particular case, this is one of those cases when they took the tribe of Joseph and they counted individually the half tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh. Why? Because Levite wasn't included in this. Okay. Why? Okay. Because they get counted separately and it's a different count with the Levites and they counted them by clan. And the reason they counted them by clan is because there were three families or and the three families were the Kohathites, and they were the ones that were responsible for transporting the real sacred artifacts. You know, they they transported the ark, and they transported the menorah, and the showbread table. Okay, so they had the important stuff. Next was the was the family, I believe, of Gershon that did you know some of the uh, the curtains and you know the peripheral things. And finally, you had Morari, that was the third uh, clan, and they're the ones that kind of got the burden of the planks and the poles and stuff like that, uh, not the poles, the, uh, the ropes, things like that, you know, the least important. Why they did it that way, I'm not sure, but I believe the Kohath was, and the Kohathites, it was a family of Kohath, who was uh, a Levi, he was the son of Levi, and he was the ancestor of Moses and Aaron. So that's why. So with the Levites, they were actually counted from age five, you know, because at that point they start getting inculcated, they start getting educated into the ways of the Levites. Now, technically, the Levites only served in the temple between the ages of 30 and 50. Between the ages of 20 and 30, they were like apprentices. Under the age of 20, they were still learning. 
they were still learning about the, uh, the procedures and the rituals and that type of thing. And after the age of 50, your strength is diminishing and you know you can't really officiate and you know it's time to bring in a new generation. So, uh, you know, do they still keep them around for reference? Sure, of course. That's that's what we did. In Judaism, you know, we talk about Ziknei Yisrael, the elders of Israel. The elders, we're the ones, you know, me, I'm, I'm an elder, you know, I'm old. Uh, we're the ones that have been through it all. We've seen a lot of it. We've done our study and we've studied our lives. You know, in Torah, that's what you do when, when you're a Jew. You study, you know, your, your, your Torah. And so you know. So that's this week's Torah portion. Hope to see you there Saturday. Please come Friday, you know, help uh, give give your support to John Paul. He's going to do a great job. And um, thanks again for listening. And uh, oh, we have on Tuesday, there is, which uh, is probably past when you see this, that's the new month. And uh, that's the month of Sivan, which we uh, brought in on uh, Shabbat, on, on last Shabbat. It's going to be on Tuesday, Yom Shlishi. So have a good new month. Peace and prosperity to you all. And we'll see you in services, and thanks for listening.